Welcome back to Regis Pre-Algebra. This is Lesson 1.13, Proper and Improper Fractions. Now, we've already been talking about fractions, and we rem remember that we have been saying that if I have a fraction like this, the top number is called the numerator, and the bottom number is called the denominator. Now, denominator, sorry. Now, the definition of a proper fraction is where the numerator is less than the denominator. So any, any fraction, 2 fifths, 17 eighteenths, 101 over 112, let's say. Any time where the numerator is the least number and the denominator is greater, these are all called proper fractions. Now, a proper fraction may be reduced, like we talked about last class, but it cannot be changed into what we would call a mixed number or a whole number. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, recall that if I had something like 4, 6, that is not in its lowest terms, because I could divide both the de numerator and the denominator by 2. So 4 divided by 2 is 2, and 6 divided by 2 is 3. And so this would be the reduced form of this original fraction. But nonetheless, this is proper because 4 is less than 6, and this also is proper because 2 is less than 3. All right. Now, an improper fraction, therefore, whoops, excuse me, would be the other way. Here, let me adjust my screen. So an improper fraction would mean the numerator is greater than the denominator. For instance, 5 fourths. Now, for right now, well, this is called improper, okay? We want to be able to convert this to a mixed or a whole number. This one here would be converted to a mixed number, meaning a whole part, a whole number part, plus a fraction part. How do I do that? Well, I would take the numerator, 5, and I would ask myself, I might not do this on paper, but I would ask myself, how many times does 4, the denominator, go into 5? Well, it goes in one time with a remainder of 1. So this shows me how many whole numbers I would have. And this shows me, right here, the remainder would show me how many remain in the fraction part, keeping the same denominator as I had before. Now this is kind of easy to see. If I had 5 fours, I would have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 fours, and that is the same as 1 whole plus 1 more fourth. Okay. That's really what we're doing here. So again, the basic operation, however, would be, for instance, if I have something like um, 9 fourths, I think divide 4 goes into 9 two times with 1 left over, or 1 fourth. If I had, oh, let's see, um, think of another one, 17 eighths, 8 goes into 17 two times, making 16, and 1 more what? Not force now, but we'll take the, always take the same denominator, 1 8. Let me go to the next page, give a couple more examples. Now here's a good example. This also is an improper fraction. Remember, I'm recognizing that because the numerator is larger than the denominator. To convert it to a mixed number, I divide 45 into 50, which goes in one time with a remainder of 5, 40 fifths. However, there's a problem with this one. And so that's why I picked it as my example, because this part, the fractional part, is not in its simplest form. So always be sure you, you reduce your fraction. So this is really 1, 5 goes into both 45 and 5, leaving me with 1 9. So this would be the proper answer there. So now what we've been doing here is we're, we've been converting from improper to mixed, 
Uh, let me give you one more example. What if I had something like a 40, whoops, didn't say what I wrote. Okay, 40 fifths. Notice what happens here. This is also improper, but 5 goes into 40 eight times with a remainder of nothing. Okay, so that's why we say we can convert to um, an improper to mixed or just a whole number. Sometimes you will have no fractional part remaining. Okay, and this is a good example of that. Now, we also want to be able to convert from mixed back to a improper fraction. Okay, so how would I do that? I kind of do that in reverse. Let's say I have the number 6 and 1 third. Now, rather than dividing, I'm going to multiply back that denominator 3 times 6. That would be 18 and 1 more. So I've got 3 times 6. Let me write it down, what I'm doing. 3 times, times 6. I'm trying to make my plus one more because of this. So 3 times 6 is 18, plus one more is 19 over the same denominator, 3. Okay. So I'm kind of working in reverse now. Let me give you a couple more examples of that. Um, let's say I had a, oh, a 2 and 3 fourths. Again, I go 4 times 2 is 8, plus 3 more is 11 over 4. Hopefully this is reviewed to you. Let me show you that in picture form so you see what we're doing here. If we have two holes, let me do it this way, two holes and 3 fourths, Well, notice that this is four holes, or four, <laughs> no, it's not, it's four fours, one, two, three, four, four fours more, and then the three. So what have I done? I've said the four, because I'm dividing the whole number into four parts, four holes, or four parts once, four parts twice, because I have two holes, plus three more. So that shows in picture form exactly what we're doing here. So that's 11 fourths in all. One more example for good measure, and then I think you'll be in good shape to do the homework. Let's say we have 10 and 3 sevenths. I want to convert that now from a mixed to an improper I'm going to take the 7 times the 10, that's 70, plus 3 more, or 73 sevens. Okay. Go ahead, if you need to, you can, um, no, never mind, don't reduce that to simplest form, I don't think, for this, unless they tell you to. Okay. So bring any questions to class.